Hello, I'm John Foster, and I'm a medical doctor who does Social Security Disability exams. And today I'm going to talk about how to fill out Form SSA 3373 to have the best chance of having your disability claim approved. As usual, everything I say reflects my own opinions based on my own experience and study, and not the opinions of the Social Security Administration or any other medical body. Now, I was prompted to make this video because yesterday I was going through the information on patients that Social Security has sent me prior to my day of doing consultative examinations. And it, for one of the patients, they'd included their SSA 3373. And the person had filled it out so badly that it was sure to delay or hurt their claim being approved. And I want to the viewers of this video to avoid making the same mistakes that person did. That person had two medical conditions both of which can range from mild to very severe and disabling. There were some doctors and hospital records, but none of them clearly indicated to me how bad or disabling those two conditions were. So let me go into Form SSA 3373. The title of the form is Functional Report adult. It's a form where you are asked to describe the problems you have working and living due to your medical problems, your illness or injury. This is one of your big chances to explain to the Social Security Administration how your illnesses or injuries make it difficult for you to work. And as I say over and over again, disability means you have medical problems that prevent you from working. It's very important that you describe your medical problems and that you describe how those problems interfere with work-related activities. In the description to this video, I've listed the work-related abilities Social Security considers important, and here they are. The ability to see, hear, sit, stand, walk, lift, carry, handle objects, speak, travel, understand, remember, concentrate persist, interact socially, and adapt. If you can give Social Security a clear picture how some of those abilities are significantly limited by your prob medical problems, you will have gone a long way towards getting your claim approved. So now I'm going to go through the 10 pages of Form SSA 3373 and point out the facts that I think are pertinent and the problems that I see. The first page tells you how to fill out the form, and it tells you if you're having difficulty fill up, filling out the form, you can contact somebody in the Social Security Administration. This form is so important that I think that's good advice. If you're unsure how to answer any question, ask for help. The next thing is that Social Security does not want a doctor or hospital to fill out the form. And finally, they say that if you run out of space answering any questions, they have an additional space called Remarks where you can add more information. And I'd highly recommend that you use that if necessary. Page 2 is about the Privacy Act and Paperwork Reduction Act and really aren't that significant. Page 3, however, is crucially important. After giving your demographic information like name and address, they ask in Section B information about your illnesses, injuries, or conditions. How do your Ill 
illnesses, injuries, or conditions limit your ability to work. Folks, that is the key to your disability claim. You must explain how your medical problems limit your ability to work. In the case that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the person left that section blank. It's almost like they didn't want their claim to be approved. If you cannot explain why you can't work, why should Social Security consider you disabled? Here's what I recommend that you do. On some paper, list each of those abilities that you'll find in the description to this video, and then think about each one and your medical conditions. For each one that your medical conditions limit, write down what is limited and to what extent. Try to be specific. As an example, if you can't lift heavy objects due to pain in an arm, you need to specify what weight is heavy for you. I've in the past worked with power lifters who would consider a 60 pound dumbbell a light weight. You need to specify weight, time, distance. If you're limited in walking, how many minutes can you walk? How far can you walk? Do you need to rest? How long do you need to rest before you can continue? The first question on page four is describe what you do from the time you wake up until going to bed. And here I'm probably going to make some people angry. What I don't want to see is the poor me answer, which is because of my problems, I sit around at home all day. That's not going to impress Social Security that you're somebody with medical problems who is trying to get better or return to work. In fact, it makes it seem like you're lazy. I would highly recommend that you put in some information about something you're doing to improve your medical condition or health. For example, if your walking is limited, you might put down that my walking is limited, but each day I walk so many minutes or such a distance to try and improve it. Same thing if you have trouble lifting or carrying something. Perhaps you get a set of weights, uh, light weights maybe, and lift those at home. But don't put down that you do nothing all day. Another important question is question 10 on page 4. What were you able to do before your illness, injuries, or conditions that you can't do now? They only give you a small space for this, and this is something where I would definitely want to write more than the space available. What, how heavy an object could you lift before and how heavy now? How far could you walk before and how far now? These sorts of specific pieces of information will go a long way towards getting your disability claim approved. Question 11 asks about sleep problems related to your medical issues. And it's hard to work if you can't sleep. I would definitely go into great detail again with this question if your problems are interfering with your sleep. Question number 12 asks about your ability to perform personal care. This is things like cleaning yourself, dressing yourself, and a lot of disabling problems can interfere with your ability to care for yourself. If you can't lift your arms above shoulder level, you may not be able to brush your hair. If your hands are stiff and painful with arthritis, you may not be able to do and undo small buttons like the buttons in a man's dress shirt. For a woman, can you reach behind and do up and undo your brassiere? This gives you another opportunity to go into details on how your medical issues limit you. Page 5 asks about memory problems, and if you have problems with your memory, 
here is your opportunity to present them. It also asks about preparing meals. Can you lift a heavy pot or frying pan? It asks about yard work. Can you push a lawnmower? Can you rake leaves? And it says, if you don't do house or yard work, please explain why not. You may have been able to do that sort of work before your illness and injury, and now you can't. Many of those abilities, such as heavy lifting, walking, pushing, also are related to work. So go into detail. Explain exactly what you can't do and why. Page six asks about your ability to get around, to drive a car, ride a bicycle, use public transportation, to do your own shopping and handle your own money. If you have any limitations due to your illnesses or injuries, it's important to describe these in detail. Now on page seven, they're focusing more on psychological issues. How well do you function psychologically? They ask about hobbies and interests, social activities, and get problems getting along with people. If you have a mental illness or if you have psychological issues that interfere with these sorts of things, they'll likely also interfere with your ability to get along with customers or workers at your workplace, so be sure to describe them. I've had more than a few patients who are very afraid to leave the home or to be in crowds and that can definitely be a limitation that affects their ability to work. Now, on page 8, question 20, this is another crucial question. They ask about multiple different physical tasks, such as squatting, bending, kneeling, stair climbing, remembering, concentrating. These are crucial. If your illnesses or injuries affect any of these, you want to explain how and how severely and explain in detail. Again, this is your chance to make your case to get Social Security to approve your disability claim. Don't waste it. Now back to that person who did a terrible job of filling out this form. On page eight, it asks, how far can you walk before needing to stop and rest? And the person wrote, couple blocks. That's not good enough. Does that mean two blocks? Does that mean four blocks? Does that mean six blocks? I have no idea. If you can only walk three blocks, then you need to put that in. I can only walk three blocks because and give a reason. Half of that page goes into more of the psychological, and one of the questions is, have you ever been fired or laid off from a job because of problems getting along with other people? That can be a serious issue. I had a patient not too long ago with paranoid schizophrenia, and they told me that whenever they took a job, after a while, they became convinced that everyone at work was plotting to kill them. That severely limits their ability to work. Believe it or not, while I was examining that patient, they became afraid that I was going to try to kill them. And in my report, I put down that they were severely limited in their ability to interact socially. On page 9, question 21, they ask, do you use any of the following? Crutches, walker, cane, etc. Social Security calls these assistive devices and considers them extremely important. And it's crucial that you put down why you use the device if you do use one. How does it help you? Does it relieve pain? Does it keep you from falling, etc.? Whenever I see a patient with an assistive device, Social Security wants me to say if I think it's medically necessary or not. So what I do, if at all possible, is test them standing and walking first without the device 
and then with the device and see if I can see an improvement. And then they ask, why do you need these aids? And here you can say, because it relieves pain, because it keeps me from falling, etc. Now on to the last page, page 10, and question 22 is to list your medications. Once again, the person whose form I was talking about left this blank. And from their hospital records, I'll bet my bottom dollar that they're taking quite a few medications because there was a recent hospital discharge summary with a whole long list of medicines the person had been prescribed. Doctors and nurses can tell a lot about you just from your medicine list. For example, you're on high blood pressure medicine, you must have high blood pressure. You're on diabetes medicine, you must have diabetes. You're on pain medicine, you must have a painful condition. So please fill this out completely and accurately. List your medications. Finally, Section E on page 10 is Remarks. This is a space where you can add more information if you didn't have space with the earlier on answering questions. And I'd even include additional sheets if you need to go into detail. Again, you need to tell Social Security what medical problems you have. And crucially, you need to explain how those problems keep you from working. If you can do both of those things clearly and accurately, well, you'll have gone a long way towards getting your disability claim approved. Well, I hope this has been helpful, and as usual, always remember, if it happens, it's possible.